Alright guys, welcome to a new video on the 2006 Yamaha YFZ 450. As you guys know, last video we picked this up for $2100. And uh, as you can see, it's in pretty good condition for that price. We took it for the first ride last video, and it actually runs pretty good. Super powerful, probably the most um, torquey machine I've ever owned. And a lot of people in the comments were saying the same thing, that this thing is just crazy fast, crazy torquey and uh, that is pretty much insane. Um, however, at the end of the ride, we lost spark, and now we have no spark whatsoever. It does turn over, but we have zero spark. So I'm not really sure what happened there. I looked at a couple different things. We're not getting power to the wire out of the um, stator there. I'm not sure if a safety switch is um, causing the problem or a kill switch is causing the problem. Not really too sure. A lot of people in the comments said that it could be the switch by the carburetor causing the problem or the switch up here or the on off safety switch up at the handlebar so I'm not really sure which one it is um, also we got it for so cheap because of the problem right here as you can see there's a big hole in the case by the clutch and uh, that's no good it's leaking oil the clutch is pretty wobbly in there so we're going to probably tear the whole engine down today and get a new case half for it. I was looking on eBay. I can't really find a good case half. All I can find are case halves with the, the bolt holes for the uh, case saver off of it. If I'm going to do this job and replace the, the whole cover, I want to put a case saver on it so this doesn't happen again. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do here, but let's first diagnose the no spark situation and go from there. All right, we're going to turn it on, see if we have spark today. See, so zero spark. All right, that's not good. I was thinking maybe oil got into the stator pickup area and it wasn't sparking. So I think we're gonna start with probably the switch up here, the throttle switch up here, and then go to the kill switch, and then go to the carburetor switches and then test the ohm reading on the coil, and then do the stator. All right, we're gonna take off this cover. Those are strangely very, very loose on there. Which could be a good sign or a bad sign. See if I have spark when I lightly hold this open. You can see right here is a switch and it opens and closes like that. I believe it should be held open like that. Right now it's closed. You can see it's hitting the switch in there. So we're gonna work on that for a little bit and see if we can get that to change. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like right here. All right, so it doesn't look like it's that switch over here. I just took apart the kill switch, that looks good. Did a continuity test between the two switches and the switch is working perfectly. Um, so now I'm coming down here. I'm following the wires out of the stator and they go up the frame right here. So there's a, so as you can see, there's a red and a red one and then a white one. The red and white look like they go to the pickup coil and then the white one and the yellow go to the stator. And I think that's for charging the system. We're not getting any power out of here. I've got it hooked up the voltmeter. I'm going to turn it over right now. As you can see, 0 0.04 volts. I'm going to switch it over to the yellow wire where we were on the white one from the stator. To the yellow. Absolutely nothing from the yellow. And then we're going to go to the red. This one's coming from the pickup coil. We should have 12 volts from there, I believe. Absolutely nothing. I'm 
and then from the white one by the pickup coil. I believe it's white and yellow. No, I think it's just white. And we're getting nothing out of there. So, that's not good. Um, so I believe our problem's gonna be with the stator. Unless the whole system's grounding out somewhere that I'm not really sure of, um, which I don't think it is. But, um, yeah. So let's, I guess, take a look at the case right here, the cover. Take that off, see what the damage is there. There's the starter. Oh, check this out. I was looking for problems in here. It was looking pretty good, but look at this. Look at the flywheel, take a close look. Watch what, what I dig out of here. That was in there. And this bolt is super loose in there. And then right up there. Little indent right there. So I think the flywheel is junk now. <laughs> that really sucks. Bunch of gunk in there. Check this out. Look at the stator wires right there. See the bolt hit all those. Boom, boom, boom. And this wire is actually broken out of it right here. That one snapped in half. That one's supposed to go right to this one over here. You can see the that one snapped in half. So that's a big bummer. Stator's junk. We might be able to save the flywheel, but the stator's for sure junk. That would be the culprit. Yeah, look at that. Look at the big indents from the bolts. Hitting that. Right there. Boom. 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 Alright, well we found that problem. <laughs> Man, so this is the one that got caught in there. It's shredded up a little bit, at least the, the threads are right there. So I don't know how that came loose. Must not have put Loctite on it. There's another one coming loose right here as well. Look at that, it's like halfway out. So that's no good. But we can take a close look at the case damage here. See, 
it's all packed full of stuff. All right, well, it's not looking too good. So if you guys can see that, this is where the damage is right here. So you can see they tried to fix it right here and plant that to go right there. There's really no damage in here at all. It's basically just that. So I don't know what to do here. <laughs> this is a tough one because it's really not it's not the, the actual case. It's like this little, I mean, it is the case, but it's just this clutch piece right here. So like, that's really not even that important because when you pull in the clutch, you don't even need that piece there. And it was leaking, it's just leaking oil out right here. You can see that gap right there. So I'm not sure if we should just get a new stator for it and repair that because I mean, it's not a structural part of the case, it's just a little piece. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Because tearing it apart, we're going to have probably 500 bucks into the new, the new case side. We're going to have probably 50 bucks into the stator, so it's 550 bucks into it, plus the tear down and putting back together. So. I don't know, just for that one piece right here. It's a tough decision to make. I don't I don't know if somebody can weld that up right there. It's such a bummer. It's like such a small tiny piece. It sucks. I don't know what to do. All right, so a little thinking. The correct way to do it would just be to do the case. So I think a lot of people want to see that too, the tear down of the, the engine. So I think we're going to tear down the whole engine just to replace that little piece right there. It pains me to do it, but I think it's got to be done. Someone's eventually going to have to do it. So may as well be me, I suppose. So, alright, let's get ready and uh, start tearing this thing down. Plastics have to come off first. At least these back here. Heat guard has to come off. And then we'll start tearing into the top end. Alright, we got the plastics off. Got to drain the coolant out. Drain bolt for the coolant. Right here. Let's see if that comes off here. And then once I open it, it'll start shooting out. Back in. Green bolt back in. It's a long one on there. Alright, we gotta get the coolant lines off of here. One right here. And there's one up here. All right, we're on the left side of the machine. You can see the drain bolt right there.
All right, I'll let that drain out of there. Oil lines off of here. All right, now we can get some of these cables out of the way. Got a bunch of wires. There's also a uh, oil line down here we can get off. All right, we got the carburetor off. We had to disconnect these two plugs right here. We're just gonna let it dangle there for now, but uh, it's a lot more open without that carburetor there. We're gonna take off the valve cover next. All right, now we've got access to the cam chain. That feels good. And then we can see the cams through here. We'll see if they're aftermarket once we take these off of there. All right, it looks like the cams are stock on here. Got the cam chain tensioner out. Now we can take these cams out. If I can get them out. There we go, there's one. Decompression mechanism there. Looks like that's working. Springing back. We've got one more cam to take out, and then we'll drop that timing chain down. But uh, everything looks good in there. Really, not a whole lot of wear on anything. So that cam looks really good. Looks like brand new. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, time to take the head off. To get the head off, there's two big Allens right here. You can see. And then two big bolts, one right there, one right there. And then there's a couple small ones right here. These two right there. Start by getting those off of there. I already loosened them up. Just twist right out. By the way, EAA is going on, that's why I can hear so many planes in the background. Alright, those are off. Let's get the other bolts off. timing chain guy is pretty beat up. This is the one towards the exhaust. Got the head off here. Looks pretty decent. A little carbon build up on the bottom of the valves but nothing too serious. So put that off to the side. Really not too bad. Everything is going to be laid out here perfectly so that we don't get it lost. Yeah, it looks like we have to order up a new timing chain guide while we're in there. See, good thing we're taking it apart. Probably would have shredded that thing even more if we rode it even more. That's good. Nothing serious yet, though. Here's the piston down here. Piston looks good. Cylinder wall looks like it's going to be good. Great. All right, let's get that cylinder off next. Cylinder looks good. Alright, 
piston looks pretty good. No blow by or signs of blow by. Rings look to be in good condition so far. Hard to tell without doing a a test, but it was running good, so there's no reason why it shouldn't be good. Crank feels pretty tight, up and down. Barely any side to side movement, so that's a nice crank. We'll get the piston off next, and then try to get this bottom end out. Right, getting closer to getting this uh, engine out of the frame. Let's get this big nut off for the sprocket. came off like that. Now we've got a mount right here, one on the other side of that, and then we've got the swing arm bolt we have to get off. Hopefully that comes off. I'm going to pound this one through here. Alright, now i got to lift that engine out. Now that's all free. Might get a little tricky. out here it is all free so basically we have to tear the whole engine apart probably starting with the clutch side get the whole clutch off flywheel needs to come off all that and then we can split the case and uh, hopefully I can find the case online that already comes with the bearings and we can just slide it right back on that is the uh, the goal we're gonna leave the transmission in there we're going to leave the crank in there and just slide the new case on and that will be that. Hopefully it won't be too big of a deal, but yeah, you can really see the damage right here. That was done. Let's see how far back this goes. See, it only goes right to there, so it wasn't that bad. But, may as well do it the right way, it's got to get done anyway, so. That took me maybe two hours to get that thing out of the quad. So not too bad. A lot of it's filming too, so if I didn't have to film it probably would have taken like an hour. You can see all the wires and cables and everything that came off of it. Stator had to come off. Starter had to come off. So lots of different stuff connected to it. Not a super easy job but not the worst in the world. So, I guess we can start digging into the clutch side and uh, see what that looks like. All right, let's start by getting the flywheel off. Looks like that nut has to come off first. Huh, what kind of flywheel puller is that? 
All right, let's see if we can get this flywheel off now. Oh, it looks like this one's too big. All right. I think this one's gonna be too small now. <laughs> Looks like we need a new flywheel puller. All right, let's work on getting this clutch apart. Clutch is coming off. So it starts with a friction plate. See what it ends with here. Ends with a friction plate as well. And there's a little guy in there. This way. this big nut off of there. Clutch looks really nice. Clutch basket looks decent. There's a couple little indents in there from the clutch plates, but they're not that bad. All right, and then I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to take this off to split the cases, but I'm not 100% sure. I've never taken apart one of these engines before, so we will see. See if the oil pump's working here. Seen the oil pump. Oh, there we go. See the oil pump is working. That is good. Looking pretty good in there. No metal shavings though. So uh, so far so good. All right, we got all the parts over here, all laid out. So this is kind of what a whole engine looks like, all laid out. Quite a few parts. And then we're just waiting on the flywheel puller to come. 
must be a custom one for YFZ 450s. Uh, probably like a 31 millimeter, I'm guessing. But once we get the flywheel off, we can split the case, swap the case, and uh, put everything back together. It's really not that bad, it's just really time consuming. So, But uh, I'll be looking for a case in the meantime. Hopefully we can find one for a pretty good price. Uh, I don't really want to spend $500, but I guess I will if I can't find anything else. But, uh, and then we just need the, uh, the cam chain guide right there, because this one was frayed pretty good. So we'll order that one up as well. And I think that's it for parts. Everything else looked good, piston, cylinder looked good, valves look good, not bent. So really, it's just the case. And uh, this cover I think as well. Actually, I don't know, the cover might be okay. Yeah, I think this cover is okay. It's not through on the cover right here. Oh, that's awesome. I thought it was going to be through right there. So it looks like they just put some on here to hold the other thing in place. Yeah, it's not through right here. So we'll keep that cover on there. That's good. Oh, and then the stator we need. So we'll buy the stator, swap that out, and then we should have spark, I would think. Um, I'll try buying the stator first. If it doesn't work, I'll buy the flywheel and the stator. The flywheel has like a little ding in it, but I don't think that's gonna cause um, any issues for the spark. It shouldn't, at least. So, we found out what was causing the no spark, and uh, we pretty much have the engine all disassembled here. So, got quite a bit done today. Pretty happy with that. We'll order up those parts, and then we'll continue on to part three of the video. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And until next time, we are out.